Hello and welcome to the station on serotonin syndrome. So this is a management-based station where a candidate is expected to interpret the physical observations of a patient and identify the presence of serotonin syndrome. The candidate is expected to recognise that this is a medical emergency and explain the urgency of that situation and principles in management to a concerned relative. So let's have a look at how this station was structured. So from the question, we can see that the patient is switching from fluoxetine to venlafaxine. According to prescribing guidelines, however, has developed sweating, muscle stiffness, is pyrexial, tachycardic, tachypneic, hypertensive, in the absence of any signs of um, infection, because we've got uh, sort of a normal FBC uh, and normal CK level. So we know that this isn't a, a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. So it's more than likely given the medications that the patient is on that this is a serotonin syndrome and that this is a medical emergency. And so that's something the examiners would expect you to pick up on in what, whilst you're interpreting the question. So when it comes to then introducing yourself and setting the scene, if you notice, I did my best to pre-warn the relative that I wanted to, to, to discuss the situation with him urgently. Uh, and so if you're bringing that sense of urgency into the, into the, um, into the station and, 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 try, and bringing that, uh, that, that out early on that this is a medical emergency, uh, then it's much easier to manage the anxieties of a relative uh, without falling into the trap of suddenly informing the relative that this is a medical emergency halfway through the station or three quarters of the way through the station, which could obviously then cause the, the relative's anxieties to raise considerably during the scenario and make it much more, much more challenging to navigate. So as you saw on the main, as you saw on the video, the main points to to of note really are exploring the the, the relative's understanding of of, of the situation, um, and then then explaining the the situation by um, avoiding the use of, of jargon. And so obviously we, you know, I, I asked about whether the patient the the, the father knew about how uh, potentially how antidepressants might work, um, and then he you know, he he was aware of. Uh, this phrase a happy chemical and then we could use that as a way in to, to explain that um, serotonin is one of the chemicals that we're aiming to increase um, using antidepressant treatment however because of the the way that um, one was uh, the fluoxetine was switched to the vendafaxine there was a uh, an overdose of, of serotonin that was occurring in, in the brain and that's responsible for the the current signs and symptoms that his son is suffering with uh, and that the condition is an emergency uh, it's been recognised early uh, and that the decision is that we're going to, he's going to need uh, immediate transfer to a medical ward where they would continue to manage his current symptoms. But in the meantime, we've stopped all of his medication um, and that um, he will start to improve over the next 48 to 72 hours once all of the drugs are cleared from his system. And then we can then consider um, a retrial with venlafaxine. Um, but this would need to be done uh, with um, guidance from the, the medical team, the, 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 the hospital pharmacist, and with strict monitoring of, of his physical health. So those would be the main um, key points that come across in the, in the structure of this particular station. And then in terms of some of the, the script lines, so as I said, the, 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 the introduction and setting the scene is, is really a, a key opportunity just to, to bring across that, um, that, we, that we are concerned about his son's condition. Uh, and that's something I want to discuss with you and I want to discuss what the ongoing management is. And if, and if you're just portraying that sense of urgency, as I said, then it's, um, it's much more easier to navigate the station than entering the station quite calmly and, um, and, and having a, a rather calm discussion before springing upon to the relative that this is a medical emergency because when, when, we've, um, when I've examined candidates who've, who've, who've done that, the, 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 the relative's anxieties just go through the roof going, well, you know, what are you doing here? Why, why didn't you tell me this is a medical emergency already? You know, what, why are you spending time uh, talking to me about it? Um, so in order to avoid that kind of situation, um, we, you, as I said, the, the introduction set in the scene is, is, is an important um, way of avoiding that. So, hello, Mr. Rashford. My name is Dr. X. And I'm one of the psychiatrists that work here on the ward. I've come to speak to you today about your son, Brian, as we do have some urgent concerns about him that I want to discuss with you uh, right now. Could you share with me um, your understanding as to why he is in hospital? And then, and then obviously we, we can tailor our explanation um, to his understanding. And then as you saw on the video, I, I used the question about, you know, has anybody explained how, um, or you know, would you happen to know how antidepressants work at all? Um, 
uh, and then again you can tell your explanation from there so so the 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 aim of antidepressants is to increase certain levels of chemicals in the brain to help improve mood and lower anxiety levels and one of these chemicals is called serotonin uh, and whilst he was on the ward we aim to switch his medication from fluoxetine to venlafaxine safely however he appeared to develop he appeared to develop an excessive amount of this chemical called serotonin and that's responsible for the for the signs and symptoms that he's currently presenting with does that make sense and the reason I wanted to discuss with this with you urgently is that it is classed as a medical emergency. However, we have recognised this early whilst he's been an inpatient here in the hospital. So again, that, that will help um, at least um, alleviate some of the, um, the father's anxiety uh, to help you um, through the station. So then our next steps are to, are to stop his medications and refer him to a medical ward for further investigations. So they may also want to do further investigations whilst he's on the medical ward to confirm the diagnosis. He'll be monitored until his symptoms return to normal. His symptoms could return to normal over the next 24 to 72 hours. Uh, and then at that stage, we would need to um, discuss his management with the hospital pharmacist and the medical team before considering a retrial um, of an antidepressant. And the key things are that we would start him on the lowest possible dose of this medication and increase it very slowly with strict medical supervision. So that's not obviously not a, a comprehensive list of the, the um, situations where serotonin syndrome could uh, become apparent, uh, but in terms of cask-related situations, we're obviously looking for anything in the question uh, if a patient has been cross-titrated from an SSRI to another SSRI very quickly, or it's from a, an, an SSRI to an SNRI very quickly, as was in the in this particular station. They could use um, tricyclics or uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, also known to cause serotonin syndrome. Patient may be on opioid pain medications or bupropion. Uh, I mean, those would be some of the common medications that we might see um, in clinic, but, but normally with cascaded situations, they would use very obvious situations so that a candidate can pick up on the fact that this is serotonin syndrome. Uh, there may also um, ha have a situation where a patient's taken an overdose um, of an SSRI or an SNRI, either intentionally or unintentionally, and developed a serotonin syndrome uh, as a result of that. Or the patient's been using illicit drugs, amphetamines or, 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 or MDMA-based um, illicit drugs that um, can, uh, can cause this. And then in terms of the investigations, as I mean, it would be general investigations, really just to rule out any other source um, of why the patient might be presenting like this. So doing a, doing a, um, a full blood screen, obviously, to rule out any, uh, any raised white cell counts, checking the urine for any uh, infection, uh, doing a chest x-ray for similar reasons, CT scan uh, and, uh, and, an L, and a lumbar puncture if, if required. If this was a station where you're discussing it with a consultant, I mean, a consultant may may or may not just quiz you a little bit more on terms of what other things they could you could be doing to medically stabilise the patient. So obviously oxygen, fluids to, to maintain hydration, muscle relaxants, um, and then the medical team may start prescribe medications that block the production of serotonin, so medications like ciproheptadine uh, and also ongoing monitoring of, of blood pressure so any other medications that may that they may need to be required to reduce the patient's blood pressure um, there's no long-term in terms of the prognosis there's no long-term complications once serotonin is returned to normal uh, and as i said the symptoms should generally resolve over, over 24 to 48 hours once all the medications are cleared uh, from the patient's system so I hope that tutorial has been useful for you. Good luck with it, and I will see you in the next tutorial.